means God's beloved children. Today, more than ever, we must show the world is desperately waiting for us to display Jesus. Amen? They are in great anticipation. The Bible says the whole earth is moaning and groaning and crying out. Even the animals know that something is terribly wrong. And they are waiting for what does the Bible say? They're waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God to take their rightful place on the earth and show them Jesus and take over. Amen. They said all creation, even the animals know that this system is not running right. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They actually want to see the true and living God, the Messiah that they was told about. Amen. They say you have them. You have him. They searched all the world over, and they could not find him, so they had to go to God's people to say, show me the Messiah. Show me the son of the living God. Amen? And this is critical. In a chaotic world, and it's going crazy, it looks like the world is spinning off its axis and spinning off into space, people want to know they don't want an invitation. They want to know who for sure has the absolute correct answer. And we know that is Jesus Christ. That's why they're coming to you. They know you have the answer. Amen. They say, show us the true living Messiah. And that could only be displayed in God's people only. The world will never find them. Will never find him or anything of God. Amen. Until they come to his people. This is the problem. This is the problem. We show Jesus. This is what the Lord has put on my heart that we have to do better in. And we can do better, amen. amen. We can do better at displaying Jesus Christ, amen. Hallelujah. We can do much better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. This is the problem, he says. We do display the master and he loves that. We display Christ, but then then it's back us. We display Christ, and then it's back us. And they's like, would you be still? <laughs> Which one do we want? They don't want to see us anymore. They want us to continuously display Christ. That's the problem. We didn't show them the Messiah, which is good, but they seen a lot of us working in the flesh. Amen. They see Jesus over here that we do, and then they see the flesh over here. So they're getting confused. What the ultimate goal of the Lord is for only one to remain, and that is Jesus Christ. And we're going to show you this in Scripture. Hallelujah. So this is what the ultimate goal is. And they're becoming confused. They said, where did Jesus go? <laughs> it's like, remember the kids game we used to play hide and seek? Who remembers that game? We don't want to play hide and seek with the Lord. Amen. They don't want to keep seeking. We, they say, you know him. Why are you hiding him? He was just there an hour ago or five minutes ago. Now I'm seeing you. Amen. This is a problem. So what we need to do is to find a way that every time they see us, Christ will always be on front and stage in us. Amen. He's going to be the center of everything in us. They're no longer going to see our flesh anymore. Say, get away from me, flesh, so I can display the Messiah. I must display the Messiah. With all the problems of the world today, they don't want to see a mere human being anymore. They do not. They said, these people supposedly have him. Let's go to them. I do believe in these end times. There's going to be a great, great rally of people flooding the house of God by record droves flooding this place in churches because society and things are going to get so bad because the Bible says this, tribulation must come, right? And the end times is going to bring great tribulation. We know that, right? They're going to be so afraid.
afraid of what the devil in the world is doing, they're going to fly in here to you. And we got to be ready. And when they come here, we got to show Jesus. We don't care if we smell smoke on them. We don't care if it's a prostitute. We don't care if they own meth. We don't care if they, uh, uh, a crack pipe slip out of their purse. See? We only, we ain't going to jump in our flesh and say, oh, look at that sister. Oh, no, she's bringing prostitution in the house of God. Oh, she's trying to bring drugs into the house. We're not doing any of that. <laughs> no, we're going to accept them for who they are and love on them. They're going to see Christ. And they're not going to see our judgmental flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Because they're coming in. Trust me, by the name of the Lord, they're coming in. Amen. So my, the title of my message is Present Jesus Only. Can we say that? Present Jesus Only. Not you. Not your flesh. And not what we think. Not you. Because we'll say, oh, boy, I don't want to be bothered. Or... This homeless person come. Oh, put him to the back. I don't want him sitting next to me. He smells bad. No, Jesus would not do that. Show that homeless guy. Jesus will welcome him to sit next to him. Amen. This is what we must do. The Lord said this is the problem. This is the problem in the body of Christ. He had told me we must show Jesus constantly. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister, if you would read. And see, this stuff is fighting us. Does Jesus, which is spiritual, us, the flesh, we're fighting. Which one is going to remain on stage? Which one is going to stay up front? Sister, if you would read with me Galatians 5, 16 through 17, please. Again, Galatians 5, 16 through 17. Hallelujah. the spirit we are the flesh amen so let's determine that right away amen galatians chapter 5 16 to 17 i say then walk in the spirit and you shall not you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish amen amen read it one more time I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh Hallelujah. lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. See? Amen. They're fighting. They're at war. They are contrary to one another. They're in opposition to one another. They are in battle with one another. So that is what the world is seeing, the actual battle. We're transferring here, Jesus, here. See, they know it's a fight. They say, that's why it is so important for us to show Jesus consistently. And then they'll see. They'll see how they can see the majestic beauty of the Lord. They'll see him high and lifted up. Amen. When we show him consistently. But back and forth is not going to work. Hallelujah. You know, once they see Jesus consistently, they want to see Jesus consistently because why? They have family problems and issues for years. Their daughter had been on drugs for years. She maybe ran away. The people have health issues for years. They have financial, they need financial issues. They have needs and healing in the mind, body, and soul. They're bipolar, they're nervous, they're schizophrenic. As we're studying in the book of demons, they are some of everything. So they said, who can deliver us? Let's go to God's people. Because I heard they know a man. I've heard they know a man. They have a God in Israel that is the answer to all of these things. Go to these people and they will show you the Messiah. Not the voodoo worker, not the people that's working witchcraft. Go to the people that holds the God of Israel. Holly said, we have the God of Israel. We definitely do. We have the God of Israel. And the things that he did for Moses to, for, with Pharaoh, he would do for you. Hallelujah. But there's one thing that we must do. Sister, could you read John 3.30? We're getting to him where he can show clearly 
and get out of ourselves. So he'll show up all the time. He'll be center point. He'll be center on stage. They won't see no more of us. Hallelujah. But there's a process. How many said there's a process to get him to always show up? Because they can get your temper mad. You want a box? You said, no, Jesus would not do that. <laughs> you want to slap them? You got to say, no, Jesus would not do that. They want to squeeze your fruit to see if you got love, joy, patience, and test you and squeeze and turn your fruit to see if they mess with you. Is love still going to come out? Love must still come out. <laughs> they squeeze and punch your fruit. It still must come out whatever. They punch your orange. Is that long-suffering? That long-suffering juice of their orange must come out. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah, go right ahead, sister, and read what we must do. Oh, it is um, John uh, chapter 3, verse 30. Amen. John chapter 3, verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. There it is. See, that's step one. <laughs> we must. And guess what? The responsibility of the, it's two musts in there. He must increase. Read it again, sister. He must increase, but I must decrease. It's two musts. Must. And guess what? The Lord put the weight on the must for us to do. He had already did his part. It is finished. He must not do anything. He's sitting down. It is finished. The two must is on us. In order for us to, we must decrease so it'll make him increase. But he, does, he doesn't have to do that. We are in control of how high he increases in us. And how strong the revelation of Christ is revealed in us. The two must is on us. Amen. He's sitting down. He said it is finished. It is up for us. And we must and we must and we must and we must do this. We must say I must decrease. I must decrease heavenly father. So you can show up in me. When I go down in humility, you go up. When I go down in humility, you go up. And then you'll come center point on stage. I would be down so low they could not even see me anyway. That's the goal. Amen. The two must is on us. It's the condition that we must do. Said you must. If the master say you must, you must. If, the, if Jesus tell you you must, you must. Amen. What, what we say here, whatever he says to do, do it. So in order for the world to see Jesus Christ, we must reduce ourselves in the flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. And as we decrease, and you know what, this is not a, this is really a commandment. This is not a suggestion or something that we can do if we feel like doing or not. It is not a suggestion. It is a commandment. The Lord said, you must. If he say must, that means it is not a suggestion. So as we decrease, he's going to increase. Amen. And the master will increase in us. But then how do we do this? How do we do this? While he's increasing, it's a process. How do we keep doing this that he's always on stage and he's center point? He's in the center of everything and the people are showing him. If you will, sister, go to Galatians 2, 20. Galatians 2, 20. Hallelujah. And God shows us step-by-step -step instruction. The Lord will never leave us with, uh, as a blind guide. Amen. The Lord always makes a way for his people with instruction. You can do it. Say, I can do it. I can get rid of Eric, the old man Eric, and let Jesus come through. This old man. Amen. You can get rid of Pastor Kim. You can get rid of Sister Yolanda till they always see Christ. When we go out and minister to those people that all those problems, we did street witnessing. You think they want to see us? They know a person is coming. They see an individual coming, of course. But they want to see the person in you who's behind you, who's in you, to break that, um, that dope demon, to break every chain. They don't want to see us just in our flesh just showing up. And read us, sister, how we can do it. Amen. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Hallelujah. I have been crucified with Christ. Yeah. It is no longer I oh. who live, but Christ lives in me. 
and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Read that again, sister. It's so beautiful. Amen. That's how we can do it. Because we're going to kill ourselves in crucifixion. So we can't keep popping up. Yes, sister, read. Amen. I have been crucified with that Christ. Flesh. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. See, I noticed he showed me. I'm so glad I learned numbers and been under this ministry. I have learned a lot. And the Lord said, look at that again. There's four eyes. And we know that four is the biblical number for creation. See, he's creating something new out of you. He's killing each one of those eyes. The first eye says, I showed up to be crucified. I came in the flesh for him, the first eye. Amen. Then the second eye, I said, it is no longer I who live. So he's constantly in the process killing those eyes off. He's going to get to the real Jesus. See, he said, there's four eyes. I'm creating you over again. I'm creating you that you don't show yourself. Amen. And the third eye, let's just read it again. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And this new life that I now live in this flesh, they still don't see. Because now I'm living it by the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself still don't see, so he's just killing those eyes off until at the end of the eye is him standing only. Hallelujah! He creating, we know number four, in biblical term, is creation. On the fourth day, God created things. Amen. He's killing those eyes off, and they need to be killed off. Who was the captain of the eyes, the king of the eyes? The devil. Amen. That's one of the reasons why the eyes have to be eliminated. He says, I will be like the most high. I will ascend to the congregations of the north. I will do this and I will that. They said, you will be narrowly brought down to the pit. He said, they will barely look at you, God said. And then people are going to say, is this the devil that deceived the whole world? This thing? See? <laughs> he said, oh, he's a big deceptor. Uh, <laughs> he said, I, 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 he's going to be like God. And we all know that no one could be like God. What did God do for him? Slammed him, body slammed him down here to earth with his demons on us. Because <laughs> he had nowhere else to go until the hell preparation is all completed. Amen. So he says, whoa, he said, rejoice you heavens, for the accuser of the brethren was cast down. We teach this, the accuser of the brethren was cast down to here with us, right? We know he's here with us. So the heaven said, we can rejoice, but it says, woe to you, the inhabitants of the earth. But the devil has come down to you guys, and he knows he has great wrath because he knows he has such a short time. So that's one reason why we need to show them Christ. Because he's mad. He's doing all kind of chaotic, crazy things on this earth that we would not even believe. Amen. But the more things we show him that our eyes are killed, he will bless us. Amen. It's a demonstration of the four eyes I had in my note. And we do not want eyes. Lord God, say, please take the eye out of me. They used to say, you know, and it's a teamwork. There's no way. They used to always say in school, there's no I in team. So if a person wants to be like they call the, the main star that hogs the ball <laughs> or hogs the football, they would say, hey, you have to be a team player. It's a teamwork. There's no I in team. Amen. So we know we must work closely with God. But the manifested world wants to see you. We can do that. See, sometimes we think, God, if I went out to street witness, would they really, will it really work? Would they see you, God? Go. He says, open your mouth wide. Isn't that what he says? Go. And open your mouth wide, and I will give you what to say. Just go. Amen. And they will see Christ. We see this several times when we're at the street witnessing and even down in the conferences we go. 
we would be surprised at the miraculous that the things the Lord would do for us. Amen. But just by going and being willing and obedient to go. Amen. Let us now go to Romans 1 and 12. Hallelujah. We're getting rid of ourselves completely. We're going to be gone. We're just going to be gone. They won't see us anymore. We're just showing up just in a body to give them Christ. That's all he's using us for. We're just a body. Right? Just to show Christ. That's it. Just a body to present him. And we also know we learned in our demonic class that spirits are looking for what? A body. Amen? We learned that. They're looking for a body. Christ is too. They're all looking for bodies. That's all they want. And then your flesh can go. The demons don't want to use. The demon want to use your body. But Christ want to greatly lose your body for the kingdom of God. If you will, Sister Romans 12, 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12. Yeah, 12, 1 and 2. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this word, but be transformed oh, by the renewing oh, of your mind, oh, that you may prove what is that yes, good indeed. and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Sister, that's, oh, amen. Thank you, Sister Elizabeth. I think that's worth repeating. Read that. It's a lot in there. And this is also how we're not going to show them ourselves that they're going to constantly see Christ. Read that one more time. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. I beseech you. In other words, I implore you. I beg of you that you present your body before God as a living sacrifice. And he says, it's just your reasonable. It's not your outstanding, exceedingly above service. This is your bare minimum. He said, this is your reasonable service. We can even go higher than that. But he said, at least do this for me. Let it be your reasonable service that you present. You can go much higher. But this is the minimum I require, that it be your reasonable service. This is what you're supposed to be doing. This is like elementary one-on-one. -on -one. This is what we're supposed to be doing anyway. This way they can make a fair distinction of what's God and then what's of the world. What's God? Then they can see that image of God. Then they can say, oh, wow, this is what I'm supposed to be. That's why we came here. Because when tragedy comes, we cry, we drink, we go get high. But y'all pray. Y'all get on y'all knees and cry out. And y'all so much happier. I don't understand this. I'm going to keep looking at y'all. When y'all had a death in the family, you were sad like the normal of us. But then you bounced back. He said, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Y'all was humming and singing that. We were still in mourning for three weeks to, oh, my God. When our children had an accident, we called the paramedics. We stayed all night in the hospital. Y'all went out and broke out a bottle of oil and called for the elders of the church to lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. See, I'm watching y'all. This Jesus in y'all is something else. And we're watching. Keep him on stage only. Because we are watching. And we are seeing so much different things than what we do. My sister and people in our family had to go to AA. You went on a fast and pray. And every chain was broken from that alcohol demon. My sister went to AA, and my sister, she didn't all oh, relapse. Their families didn't relapse off of crack. They didn't relapse off of drinking. But y'all put your hands on a sick, and they go pow. They go pow. Like those glasses flew off my face. They go pow. And lay, <laughs> and they lay on the floor for a while shivering. 
God working that demon out of them. And they don't have the taste of cracker alcohol when they get up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the high. It's something about y'all I'm watching. I'm going to find out how this works. Come and see him, and then they're going to go. Come and see a man, a prophecy that told me everything. What did the lady say? She said, come and see a man that told me everything that I knew, that I ever know. He said, this husband that you got, he said, you spoke well. Because the one you currently with, you have five husbands. And he told the master told her, the one husband you with now ain't yours. <laughs> right? And she said, whoa, he know me in and out. So she, what did she do? She told the villagers and the people, come and see a man that told me everything. That's why they're looking. They're looking for you. Because the spirit of revelation that told her life is in the house of God. You think she was not tell? And they said, and it wasn't a witch doctor. It was clean. It was the Messiah. He knows everything. Amen. You know the devil does not know everything. You know that, right? He has to work in network. He has to have a demon come back and report to someone that somebody's doing. He cannot be everywhere at the same time. Only God, say only God, knows me inside and out. He knew me before I was even in my mother's womb. He knew me. Oh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's nothing like the son of the living God. You know, this is what I do for fun. And my sister does too in Alabama. We go on YouTube. People are very talented, extremely talented. God gives gifts out. We go to the people that uh, say they're going to do a glimpse of the Jordan or they're going to view heaven or they're going to view the walks of heaven. And we sit and look at those things in YouTube and those people are very talented. The, they, I said, I'm going to go see what my mansion will look like. You should do that sometime on YouTube. And boy, I tell you, <laughs> you will be amazed with the glory of God. Even though we say the Bible knows, that he said, not an eye have seen nor ear heard that entered into the heart of any man the things that God got prepared for them that love him. But it gives us a glimpse of what, and even that glimpse is extraordinary. The streets of gold, the angels are flying around, and rainbows and jewels, and oh, it's unbelievable. God has a reward for them that diligently seek him. Raise your hand and say, God, you have a reward for them that diligently seek them. He said, you know, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Amen? He says, let not your heart be troubled. He said, in my father's house is many, many, many mansions. He says, if it was not so, I would not have told you. Because they could never lie. He said, if it was not so, I would not have told you. He said, I'm going now to prepare a place. Almighty God, he says, I'm going now to prepare a place for you. That where I am, you may be with me also. So let not your heart be troubled. You already have a place prepared. Oh, glory to God in the high. Glory, let's just thank the Lord. Father God, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you to the end of this age. And then even after this age, you'll be with me through eternity. My God in heaven, I thank you. Father God, to take us. Apostle always say this. What is so special about you? What? What is so special about me that out of the 8 billion people, when you think of that, we are a small number. Out of 8 billion people, he puts you immediately in the book. And you know, God is so good, and I learned this through apostle. The first thing God does out of his love is to put you in the book so you don't mess that up. That's the part that he do. But here... That's spirit to spirit. He quickly puts the ever for your eternal life in the book so you won't mess that up. Then he's working backwards. Now, you have to do your own life with fear and trembling. 
work out your own salvation on earth. For heaven is already secured. Hallelujah. So if we die today or tonight, heaven is secured. But while we on earth with the devil, we have to work out our own soul salvation. But if we die, he secured this part for us. And then even with this part, he left the Holy Ghost here so we could deal with them demons. Amen? See, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He will never. He has an out for us. And you know what? He, the Bible says there's no temptation that is, con that is not uncommon to man. It's nothing new underneath the sun. He said he'll give you a means and a way of escape. There's nothing new to tempt us on this earth. There's nothing new under the sun, as Solomon said. Amen? But God will always provide a way of escape. Amen? Let us now go to Romans 8, 9. Now, these are the people that we are really, that's waiting on us, that we must show the Lord. They demand that you show them God. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if in the, indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Amen. Amen. You know what, sister, would you, I, I don't think that's the one, but that's good too. 819. Yeah, let's, I don't know, it's the one that I had you just to look up because my yes. thing, the creation Amen. groans and moans. Rom Romans chapter 8, verse 19. For the earnest expectation that. of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. See? Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. Whole creation, God's whole entire creation is waiting on you. That's a big responsibility. Read that one more time, sister. These are the people waiting. The whole creation, everything he created is waiting. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the revealing of the sons of God. All creation is waiting for the sons of God, the revealing of the sons of God to show them Christ. And the apostle said, even the animals know that this system is not running right. That this thing is chaotic and crazy. Even the animals consist that this is not right. Let alone, at least human beings know that this is a chaotic, crazy world. And they're all waiting on what? The sons of God to take their rightful place and take over and show them Christ and the power of their Messiah. That's what they're waiting for. All creation, the Bible says God created the heavens and earth and everything in them. All his creation is waiting on us the sons of God, and the daughters of God to show them Jesus Christ. The animals, people even know this is not right. This thing is so demonic. They're, they're shooting, they're killing. Everything you could think was right one day is now wrong, and what's wrong is right. Even children know. They're afraid to go to school. This thing is not right. We're waiting for the people of God to tell the government, the legislative bodies, we don't get into politics, but they do not have the answers. All of those meetings since presidents after presidents after presidents, I don't know, we on the, what, 47th or 8th? I don't even remember what number they are. Do you know that they still have the same problem? In all of those presidencies, we still have the same problem. The Democrats can figure it out. The Republicans can figure it out. This shows you that God only, the people of God only can figure this out. So let's not de-point, disappoint the creation. Amen. That's all I have because we want to make the services a little shorter because we have things that we have to do. But I hope that's the message that you need to go and, and look at it again, that we need to decrease. I must decrease. We must go low, 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 so he can go high, 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 right? Can you imagine both of us? And you know, God is so merciful. He could just knock us out of the way and say, I'm here on stage. But he doesn't do that because why? It's your body. It's your will. But he could do that just say, hey, I'm here. But out of the loving kindness of God. Now, the devil is the one that's forceful. 
because he gets people hooked and he want to possess you. He'll drive you. But the Holy Ghost is totally opposite. What did the man say, a, a prophet, Joseph? He's more of an feminine spirit. He said he would give him flowers like a lady and then go to prayer. He's soft. He's gentle. He's not going to be forceful as prophet uh, Jose was here. He said he buys the Holy Ghost flowers before he ministers before the Lord. It's a soft spirit, a very soft spirit, easy going. It's not forceful at all. And that's why he said we don't want to grieve him. We don't want to grieve him. And you know it grieves the spirit, but God is very forgiving. When we show up, when we show anger when they need love, or when we do an unkind word, when they need an encouraging word. See, this is Jesus fighting the flesh, us fighting the flesh back and forth. We should have let Jesus just stay there on, in front and said, Sister, I know you're angry, but I love you. We'll talk about this later. We're not going to discuss this now, but we'll talk about this later. But if I go toe-to-toe -to -toe with her, oh, boy, you know, it's going to be a bigger mess. See, that's why we have to use wisdom and allow the Lord to come in front and let our flesh be behind, amen? Crucify the flesh. And what do we do? Notice this. He said, if anyone follow me, he's going to carry his cross. Because down the road, even though I'm crucified, I'm going to have to stop and get crucified again, crucify this flesh. Then I'm carrying this cross. Something else might happen. I might have to stop and get this flesh crucified. We are always in a state of crucifying our flesh. Do you see that? This is not one time only. Amen. We got to constantly crucify the flesh. He said, the more you do that, kill those four eyes, I'm going to create in you a new person. And this person will allow me to let me manifest and move and use your body fully. Amen. Amen. That's what he wants to do. He wants to use your body fully. Amen. Do we all agree? Say, use me. Use me. Hallelujah. Use me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's all I have. Praise the Lord. Let us get let us pray.